Mark Platt, congratulations on the 10 Emmy nominations received by Grease Live, including one for yourself in the special class program uh, category. This is your second big Emmy go round because you had a lot of success with your miniseries Empire Falls. Uh, how did it feel not only knowing that you had been nominated, but that the show had received such widespread acclaim from the TV Academy? It was, uh, we had such a great time making Grease from beginning to end. It was just joyful. So it was uh, really rewarding that so many people involved in the telecast got uh, acknowledged by their peers. It was kind of icing on the cake for what was, for all of us, uh, a really memorable, terrific experience. Well, congratulations again. Uh, I want to start by asking, how did this, what was the genesis of this adaptation? I mean, we've seen a lot of uh, recent live musical events on television, but there's something a little different and unique about this one. Could you talk a little bit about how it developed? Well, Grease came to me from, uh, from the folks at Paramount, and um, uh, they asked me if I'd be interested, and I, was, uh, I was, had been so delighted that the live musical format was brought back to television. Um, and, um, but I was curious as to whether the genre of it, which felt, which felt like it, it had room to evolve, that the best of live theater and the more cinematic nature of what television could be might be combined into um, its own art form, if you will. And I thought, well, Grease is the perfect uh, musical to, 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 to have some fun with because it's, 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 it's malleable, it's, it's buoyant, it's exuberant, and um, the stakes are just fun and joy. And it allowed the room for us to uh, exercise different ideas and to combine what essentially was the notion of let's always remember we're in a live event, um, the best that live theater has to offer, but let's also lose ourselves at times in what might otherwise be a purely cinematic experience. And that's what we tried to do. Yeah, I think that's what's so extraordinary about it is that it's this amalgamation of a lot of different uh, uh, art forms. You know, it is cinematic, it is theatrical, it's television. It combines the best of all kinds of different worlds. Now, you've produced a lot of TV, you've produced a lot of films, and you've produced a lot of theater, including a little show called Wicked, which is still uh, running and, I suppose, making some money. Um, so <laughs> how did bringing each of those experiences, I suppose, and, and applying them to this, uh, what did you bring from each of them? Well, I, I think you bring a certain amount of experience and intuition about what is unique about the theatrical experience and what, what had I seen work so well in the theater. I spent a lot of time uh, producing films uh, and some musical films, or a good deal of musical films. So how camera and music and movement and story and character are integrated is something that's also uh, comes from experience and intuition. and. Um, so the getting the big picture of both gave me the ability to figure out how to integrate and also how to assemble a team of individuals who came from the different areas of expertise. I took Tommy Kale, brilliant, young, uh, successful theater director, and matched him with a great television director, Alex Rzitsky, and took a designer from the theater, matched him with a choreographer whom I'd known from his work on television and his ability to marry movement and camera uh, together. Um, same thing with my lighting designer from TV. So we, I intentionally found a group of people, assembled a group and a team that came from both worlds. And then we as a team created, um, for lack of a better word, this grammar of what our live or how our live event uh, could be scripted and, and, and experienced that incorporated live audience, but audience's character that allowed you to get lost in sequences where you almost forgot it was live and yet never forget that it was live by pulling back all of a sudden and there is the audience or there are two actors standing side by side who for the entire musical number you thought were in different environments and you reveal that they're not. All of these ideas uh, 
are, are an elaboration of this notion of combining the best of theater and television and film all into one genre. Mm -hmm. So what were some of the producerial challenges that you faced when you were putting this thing together? Well, I, I think, uh, uh, although Greece is a lot of fun, it's also very popular. So in any adaptation, one wants to make sure that you're delivering the essence and uh, the, the trope of the original material. Here we were, we were drawing from a popular stage musical and, of course, a globally uh, popular uh, film. Uh, so you don't want to go too far afield, and yet you still want to deliver an experience that is unique to what you're doing. So that was, that was a big challenge. Um, um, putting, assembling the right team uh, I, I was a challenge, but it was rather easy because everybody raised their hand and said, how can I let me be part of this? So I really felt like we had our pick uh, of the best. And once you start uh, inviting folks like Tommy Cal in and, and Alex and David Corns and uh, you, 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 they become magnets for everybody else to want to be involved. Um, there was, of course, the tremendous challenge of just the logistics of incorporating uh, all these elements of the grammar that I've articulated, how you take a live audience and, and integrate the audience into some scenes, how they become characters in scenes, um, the use of many different locations, all within the Warner's lot, but nonetheless spread apart. Um, the choreography of the cameras, all the cameras choreographed uh, uh, so that you couldn't see them as an audience member, but they were everywhere. And so that choreography, the planning of that, uh, required an awful amount of painstaking detail uh, and rehearsal. Um, I think in any musical, there's a challenge of taking all the many variables that exist, music, lyric, arrangement, accompaniment, story, character, narrative, lighting, design, camera, and marrying them together in a, in a unified vision. So uh, the unification of that vision is always a challenge, I think, in producing any musical, let alone a live event. And then, of course, there are the sort of anecdotal challenges that one could never predict, like the weather. Uh, <laughs> considering that we had two months of gorgeous weather, and then, of course, the day the telecast was a, a really fierce Los Angeles winter storm, and yes, we do have those out here, um, particularly in the El Nino season. So the wind was blowing, the rain was pouring just hours before the telecast, and we had to scurry around and, and come up with some alternative plans, which I think added to the excitement and... We ended up uh, going with, with uh, in the opening number, we had everybody use umbrellas. Uh, we weren't sure whether it would be raining or not, and even though the rain had stopped, thankfully. We just went with it, and I think it actually added to the, to the thrill and the fun of, hey, this is really happening. The pavements were soaking wet. Um, the sky was gray, but the uh, fun and excitement, I think, was, was palpable and in the air, and it really added to the overall enjoyment of the experience, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's always the case in Los Angeles. I mean, the one day when you don't want it to rain is the... <laughs> yeah, we go figure. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about the cast and, and assembling them, because, I mean, it's such a diverse group of people from all different kinds of backgrounds. I mean, again, uh, given the, the, the great team, um, our great casting director, Bernie Telsey, was also uh, a nominated for an Emmy, we really had our choice from world's theater and television and, and even pop music and, um, and, and really were able to take advantage of particular talent. Julianne Huff is not only a beautiful, gifted actress and singer, but my gosh, what a dancer. And Aaron Tibet, great star of the Broadway stage and sort of matching him into the TV world. Um, and, and then having the fun of bringing a Jesse J to do the opening number, a Boys to Men, um, uh, to play their teen angels. We, we were able to mix and match with just a great group. And, of course, there's Vanessa. Um, to talk about challenges for a producer, really for an actress, you know, uh, Vanessa, uh, who's so brilliant in the show and unfortunately lost her dad the morning of the telecast. And knowing it was live and knowing we had no understudies um, was fierce in her desire to go on. And um, we gathered the group together 
the rain and the wind were pouring outside, but we didn't notice. We gathered around Vanessa, and she said, I'm ready. I'm doing this for my dad. And um, you, know, you, you can't plan for a life event like that. And uh, I think we all felt in a certain way that we were putting on a show for even a bigger reason than just entertaining everyone. And um, so that cast was, uh, was fantastic, down to every dancer. Anna Gasteyer, I mean, just just a brilliant comedian. Um, and as I said, there wasn't a single person there who just didn't have this feeling like, I'm so lucky I get to be here and get to do this. It was just one of those experiences and it was our hope and I think we were successful in that. You really felt that kind of pour across the camera and into people's homes and wherever they were watching that um, this exuberance and, and joy and really appreciation that we all got to do this. And you could feel it in every dance move and every note that was sung in every line. And um, it really informed the entire evening. Absolutely. Um, so you've worked a lot. You've done a lot of musicals in your career, not just uh, uh, Wicked and this, but also Into the Woods and Nine, and you've got La La Land coming out. What draws you to that genre? Well, I, I, I love music, first of all, all kinds of music, from classical to, to uh, become a recent fan of jazz, even in the making of La La Land. There's a story to that. And, and um, as a kid, my parents would take me to see musical theater all the time. It just felt like I, I love stories and I love storytelling. And the integration of music and story just felt natural to me always and something that I just took to. And in, in many of my films, which aren't musicals per se, music is always a really strong, strong character, whether it's a drama like Rachel Getting Married or um, almost a comic book movie like, like, like Scott Pilgrim versus the world, um, even Legally Blonde, which has a musical number. They, they're built like and constructed like musicals and the music that comes in and out of them is, is very much a character. So uh, musical storytelling just feels very natural to me. And what I love about music, I suppose, is that it has no filter and uh, it, it, just, it just enters our being and makes us feel. Uh, and I'm very empathetic and a person who feels things very deeply. So music speaks to me. So the musical genre, the musical narrative genre has always, I've always been a fan of it. Um, I've always enjoyed it. I've always been challenged by it. Uh, and so I'm lucky that I've gotten to sort of live in that world, both on stage, certainly on film and now on television. Mm -hmm. Do you care to share that story about learning to love jazz on La La Land or do we need to save that for <laughs> no, no, it's just, uh, it's just uh, Damien Chazelle who's a wonderful director, loves jazz as does Justin Hurwitz who composed the music to, to their film Whiplash. And also to uh, La La Land, where jazz is a character, and I would always just tease everyone that, you know, who likes jazz, which is, I guess, sort of, the, sort of the point. But I did come to a deep appreciation of it, for whatever it's worth, and now I can say I love every form of music. <laughs> Finally, after all this time. <laughs> um, so you just got your first Oscar nomination this last year for Bridges Spies. Um, and a lot of the films that you've done have had some kind of recognition from the Academy, and you've got a couple of high-profile movies coming out this year, including La La Land and Billy Lynn's long halftime walk with Ang Lee. Um, what does that kind of ignition mean for you? Well, look, it's wonderful to be recognized, particularly by peers. And um, it's something I think most people aspire to some kind of recognition. But I, I think for me, and I think for most people, the... The making of a, of a film, or in this instance, a, a live television event or a stage musical, the journey of that, uh, of creating that, is, is, is often long and arduous um, and really challenging. And, and, and uh, I believe that one has to find the joy and be joyful in the journey. And, and because it takes up so much of yourself, and of your time and your time away from your loved ones. And um, so for me, the, the, the best measure of success and the way I measure success in all of my endeavors professionally really is by the journey. Did, did, did we all try our hardest, have the best of intentions, 
um, give our most, have fun in the making of, and uh, retain a creative integrity and a passion and commitment. Of course, you hope for the results that are successful in terms of an audience uh, uh, embracing what you've created, and, and then thereafter the hope even for, for recognition by your peers. But I do look at that as wonderful it is as, as, as icing on the cake. And um, as I started out this interview, I can use Greece Live as an example of a journey that really from the very beginning was uh, so, so wonderful and so happy and so many people committed and working so hard uh, side by side that before uh, four o'clock on that Sunday it was for us already a great success. Um, that, that we were able to deliver what we intended to uh, was lovely icing on the cake and then that it was recognized really as wonderful and tremendous and a great joy for all of us. Well, Mark, thank you so much and congratulations again on uh, all of the Emmy success and uh, it was a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it as well. We'll speak soon. Thank you. Speak soon. Bye. Bye.